Welcome to Retro Crisis. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install and get up and running with RetroArch on Arch Linux. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to install RetroArch, how to import a game into RetroArch, how to add BIOS files to RetroArch, and how to actually play a game within RetroArch. So the first thing to do is go to the Discover Software Center down here. And if it doesn't show there, just click on your application launcher and go to System and go to Discover Software Center. And then once it's open, go to Games, Emulators, and then when you're on the Emulator screen, just scroll down until you find RetroArch. And there it is. And click it once to open it, and then double check that it says RetroArch by Libretro. And then click on Install from FlatHub and then just wait for it to download and install. Great, so once the installation is completed, you should see the launch button appear. But what we'll do for now is close this window and then go to your application launcher and then go to games and you'll notice RetroArch now appears in the games subsection. And now let's click it to open it. Great, so once you've opened up RetroArch, you should see something that looks a little bit like this. RetroArch for beginners can look very overwhelming. There's an incredible amount of options that you can configure. But don't worry about it, just stick with it and eventually it will begin to make sense to you. So what I'm going to do for this video is show you the kind of basic level concepts of how to add a game into RetroArch and how to play that game. So in this video, I'm going to add a PlayStation game to RetroArch and you can go ahead and use the same methodology to add games for other systems to RetroArch too. Now the configuration I'm going to show you is what works well for me, but I totally understand that some of these settings may work differently for other people. So firstly, I'm going to go to settings and then go to video and output and then video. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to change this to Vulkan. If Vulkan doesn't work for you, maybe try GL Core. And if GL Core doesn't work for you, maybe try GL. So once you've changed your video output to Vulkan, you need to close and restart RetroArch. Next thing is go to online updater and core downloader. So RetroArch itself is not an emulator. RetroArch is more of a kind of bucket that collects a whole variety of different emulators or cores in this case. So each one of these cores is an emulator. So as you can see, all the cores are divided up by system and manufacturer. So for example, if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see something like NEC and then the PC98, and then in brackets, you can see the name of the emulator core. What we're going to do is go down to Sony, go to Sony PlayStation, and I'm going to download Beetle PSX HW. So the name of this core is Beetle PSX HW, and it emulates the Sony PlayStation. So press enter to download, and once you see that green tick, you are good to go. So let's go back. And now one other thing that's worth doing is go to online updater and at the bottom you'll see a whole series of update options. So stuff like update core info files, update assets. What I would do is maybe spend a minute or two just updating everything just to make sure you have all the latest gadgets and gizmos. So you just press enter on each one and just wait for it to complete. These won't be 100% relevant to this video, but it's definitely worth keeping these up to date. Great, so once that's completed, you can now exit RetroArch. Excellent, so once you've closed RetroArch, we need to open a new folder. What you could do is go down here where it says Dolphin File Manager and open that. But if that icon doesn't appear for you, just go to your application launcher and go to System, and then you should see Dolphin File Manager here. So let's open it. And now what we want to do is go to your RetroArch folder. So go to this area up here where it says home, and then you should see something like home forward slash your username. But if you don't, that's okay. Just delete whatever you see, type in forward slash home, forward slash your username. In my case, it's retro crisis, and then forward slash, and then type in dot VAR forward slash and then press enter. And then you should see this folder appear, which is called app and then open it. And then here you'll see a bunch of apps that you've got installed on your system. And then the one we're interested in is this one, which says org.libretro.retroarch and open it and go to config. 
and then RetroArch. Now I strongly recommend that you kind of add this folder to like your favorites or places and you can do that by right clicking in an empty space and then go to add to places. And then once you've done that, you'll notice on the left hand side, the RetroArch folder will appear. And that kind of saves you typing in the file path each and every time you want to add something to RetroArch. This will save you so much time in the long run. So now as we want to run a PlayStation game within RetroArch, you'll probably already know, Sony PlayStation games generally need a BIOS file to operate. And what you want to do is go to your system folder here. And in this area, you want to copy and paste your PlayStation BIOS file. Files. Now, because those are copyrighted files, I can't provide them to you, so you'll have to find those yourself. And then once you've copied them here, you'll see something that looks along these lines. Now we should be safe to close this folder, and now open RetroArch again. And now the final step is to import the game you want to play. And you can do that by going to Import Content, and if you have a folder full of games, you can go to scan directory, press enter, and then just navigate to the folder where your games are saved. So on my system, I'm going to go to home and retro crisis, and I've got a folder on my desktop called emulation. So I'll go down to desktop and then emulation and then Sony PlayStation. If I go in there and then once you've found the folder, you just need to go to scan this directory and then press enter and then wait for the scanning process to complete. Great. So once that's completed, just keep pressing backspace until you get back to the main menu. And now you'll notice at the bottom here, you'll see a PlayStation playlist has been created and the game you've imported should appear on that list. And now in order to load that game, all you need to do is press enter. But before you do that, at this point, I advise that you plug your USB control pad into your computer or a Bluetooth controller. But if you find your controller doesn't work, just close RetroArch and open it up again. Great, so now just press enter to load the game and then go to run. And now your game should begin loading. Now, as you can see, the game is currently loaded in kind of like windowed mode. But if you want to go to full screen, just press F on your keyboard. And there we have it. If you press F1 on your keyboard, you'll be taken to the quick menu. And I'm pretty sure you'll be in and out of this menu many times. So here you can do a variety of things like use save states or even go into the emulator options or the core options. And if you go down here to core options, you'll notice that each different core that you use has a variety of different options. For example, you can manipulate the video options or the sound options, or there may be emulation hacks you can use and various other things. And if at any point you want to exit your game, you can just go to close content. So in this video, I've shown you how to download a core. I've shown you how to add a BIOS file, and I've shown you how to import a game into RetroArch and play that game. Any game that you've successfully launched within RetroArch can also be found in the history tab here, or you can just go down to the playlist you created. If you'd like to learn more about RetroArch and all the various options it has, I have a whole list of video guides that can show Show you how to use the various features within RetroArch. These range from absolute beginner's guides to those looking to try something a bit more intermediate. Anyway, if you'd like to exit RetroArch, all you need to do is go up to the main menus option and you can go down to quit or you can just press the escape button twice. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.